welcome to CES 2023. The gentlemen who are sitting here are the finest in the business, in the tech business. Gary Shapiro needs no introduction, president, CDA, and CES. I've known him for 10 years. He's only got younger by the day. <laughs> and of course, Mr. Kaushal Nevergar, president of Reliance Digital. And I've known him also. He's like a mentor to me also in a lot of sense. So this is a, going to be a discussion about technology, about a lot of things. Stay tuned. You're going to pick up a lot of things, maybe some stock market trends. So let's start. Gary, a lot has happened since we met uh, three, three years, years ago. Three years ago. Three years ago. Welcome back. Now it's a great show again. You're right. here, both of you. <laughs> So, uh, what is the key highlight this year? I mean, this is the question that I want to start with of 2023 in CES. Well, these three years have been difficult, but they've sure. the pandemic's affected the world. But one thing they taught us is that although we all love technology and it's helped us get through this pandemic mm -hmm. and be productive, the fact is we also learned that we need each other. We need to come together. We need that for innovation for business deals, to, to, to explore and discover new products, to have the relationships between different companies and different industries. And that's one thing that has helped, in a sense, define it. The other thing that's new here is we have a theme for the show, which we've never had before. We always talk about innovation. This show is about sustainability. And we've aligned ourselves with the United Nations related body that focuses on these. And, and you, that's why you see the UN logo around the show. Oh, yeah. So we have these pillars of securities that every person should be entitled to in the world. Clean air and clean water, food, healthcare, community involvement, political involvement. And these are things that technology totally enables. I think that's a great thing. And CES as a platform has a lot of power, reach technology to solve a lot of problems. Now, uh, uh, yeah, I, when we walked on the, on the show, I'm sure Mr. Koshal also agree that there's a lot of things on sustainability, on medical, also to enable people who are disabled. Is there a conscious effort which CTA is also trying to push manufacturers to come with technology? Are you like enabling in some sort of partnership together with all these companies coming together here? That's a great question. And there's certainly a focus on helping people with disabilities. That's uh, part of it is the United States government has, uh, has laws which mm -hmm. uh, require businesses and others to do what they can to help people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. um, and part of it though is we have our own foundation that who is it's a charity which helps get technology to people with disabilities and older people to solve problems. Right. You know, for older people, they need a lot of help. In the United States culture, for example, it's not that the parents <laughs> live with the kids always. <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes okay. technology okay. helps fill the gap. Uh, but definitely there is a uh, focus that we have and we've invited many disability organizations to join the CES. We worked very hard to get a law passed that says that retailers have the right in the United States to sell uh, products for hearing aids. Before this law was passed, you had to go to a doctor and there was a few hearing aid companies and it was so expensive most Americans could not afford hearing aids. So they, they were shut off from the, the audio world. So now it's taken almost 10 years from the idea now to the final execution. Now you can go into a, a drugstore, a retail store, a consumer technology store, and you can get a hearing aid without going to a doctor, just the way you could buy eyeglasses now without having a prescription. Wow. So, uh, Mr. Koshal, taking the cue from Gary, this would be an interesting thing to have in the real digital stores. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, yeah. are you guys planning or something looking at I, it? I think, like you said, uh, hearing aid issue has been there for some time. It was just, you know, you had to go and visit a doctor. I think this progress that's here, we, we have, hopefully it will we'll come back to India very soon. We've seen some of the companies like Bose develop those products who are really, really good at acoustics. Sure. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that happening in India. And Reliance Digital also always brings the latest in tech, you know, I mean, they are the guys are the pioneers. So what is your key takeaway from CS 2023? You've been working with me sometimes and just tell us something. So I think first and foremost, uh, uh, Ramesh, I am really, really glad to be here. I think it's been three years that we've missed this. Uh, just the ability to come here, experience all the innovation, experience all the, the technologies feels great. And right. I, I think, is very oh, absolutely. Plus, this is the forum where I get to meet all our global partners under one roof. Right? I think so. I must thank Gary to keep on pulling this off and ensure that all of us come here. Uh, so this is the primary objective. Uh, second is now that we've seen 
all of these cool things happening across various uh, booths and various brands, I think all our efforts are going to be to now make those commercially available products, take them back to India, bring them to all our consumers, right? Let them experience that. I think one of the efforts that this show is being covered is to really show every Indian what's happening at CES. Correct. So Gary, what is uh, what is what technology showcased at CES 2023 has impressed you the most? Well, pervasive throughout the show is a focus on artificial intelligence and the promise and the opportunity there, and that could power a whole bunch of things from uh, robotics to healthcare to mobility, and that's that's a big layer there uh, because we're just at the very very beginning of that, and that will do things to empower self-driving cars to surgeries that can be done with robotics to helping with very hazardous jobs uh, and, and learning from a healthcare perspective, what works and what doesn't. And I, we haven't done very well yet as a mm -hmm. society in terms of taking advantage of that, but the potential is there, the tools are there. Um, there's a lot of discussion also about web, the, the internet 3.0 and the metaverse, and obviously cyber currencies and NFTs and, and a lot of this. But to me, a lot of that really revolves around the fact that the internet is just getting better, just the way broadband's gotten better, and our experiences are more realistic. Last decade, what do you think, which sector in technology has seen the highest growth? Do you, see, do you think the IoT and the home smart automations has seen the biggest growth area? Or since you are the best man to answer this question? Uh, that, that's a great question. In the last decade, which category has seen the highest growth? Probably a new category that didn't exist before, because you know when you have nothing as a base, you grow really quick. So I'm trying to think, <laughs> you know, uh, in the decade it would probably be smartphones, because I think they've only been around for 10 or 15 years um, on a global basis, it's been smartphones. Um, in terms of other categories, they're starting to grow quickly. You know, there's been a, a ride up with the electric vehicles. Robotics is more an industrial, but it's now there's some, some home uses. Um, so I, I think that's that's plenty. Yeah, and Ramesh, if you if you really take a cue from what we are saying, the last two three years, right, um, has taught us two things: one is importance of life and importance of nature, right? So sustainability and smart living is a is, is a phenomenon that you're seeing across the years today. It's made your products more smarter. It's helped to improve your lifestyle. It's taught you about uh, you know, kind of preserving uh, nature around you. So all of these things have started coming together. And, and artificial intelligence, uh, which used to be a term right now, if you really look at, and as Reliance Digital, we, we continue to focus on personalizing technology. So if you really look at now, a simple product in your home is also personal to every individual living in the house. So a refrigerator was a typical refrigerator. But today when my daughter who's an 18 year old wants to cook she uses the screen on the refrigerator for recipes my wife would look at that from a smartphone to order groceries the other people in the house so it's still personalized television your audio viewing you know the artificial intelligence the way it's panning out right you have your individual audio settings coming together so i think all of this is 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 really what is shaping the future coming forward and um, consumer electronics is also about you know affordability. In that sense, you think Rans Digital is doing something wrong? So as as, as as India, the demographics are in our field. Right? Sure. And, and what, what's interesting in India right now with the age demographics playing in our favor, it's cost of a product versus cost of owning a product mm -hmm. are fundamentally different. They're not looking at it at a $2,000 product or a 1 lakh rupees product. They're looking at it owning that product at less than $100 a month, right? That is helping people experience the best technologies also, faster. Also bringing the cost down. Uh, it, it's not necessarily bringing the cost down, it's just making technology accessible to a much wider base. Uh, Gary, what advice would you give emerging tech companies looking to break through at CS2023? Well, they'll, we always say, if you come here as a startup, you have to come here with a comfortable pair of shoes, so that's the best advice I can Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, don't drink too much alcohol, get sleep, have some endurance, come with someone else to help you so you can eat and go to the bathroom and, and become listen and listen because you're gonna you're gonna start with one business plan and you're gonna leave with another. Correct. Right. And that's and that's 
because really this is the marketplace here. And this is where you're testing your concept. And don't think you have to have a finished product here. Yeah. You could have a prototype and explain what it does. It could be the Kickstarter kind of area. It, it's it's a it's a very different area. As you get more sophisticated with it, but you, and you also have to have a very very short message called the elevator pitch. Yes. You know that, that you could get in 30 seconds. No, too many people that are startups are so enmeshed in their ideas they give a very long thing and they lose their audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you need also something on your graphics or something that says what you do that'll pull people in that are interested in that. What problem are you solving for society? Or for a person that they that you're going to grab someone who's interested in that because you can follow it. Closing, what are the numbers this year in terms of visitors? In terms of our numbers, we're not done yet. While we're speaking, it's oh, yes. we we started beginning of day three, mm -hmm. but after at the end of last night, we had a uh, hundred and twenty-four thousand uh, registered people, wow. including five thousand media, uh, forty thousand over forty thousand from outside the United States. Uh, our goal was only a hundred thousand. Our footprint. Uh, I'm sorry, I'll have to put it in um, square feet rather than meters, but it's uh, we are at uh, 2.3, 2.2 million, almost 2.2 million net square feet of exhibit space. Wow. And that's uh, 3,200 exhibitors. And this is in terms of percentage, is it, is it pre pandemic level or? No, we're not pre pandemic. There's, there's very few shows, if any, that are pre pandemic. Yes. Yeah, yeah there, there's a recession and we've lost a lot. Uh, in terms of our footprint, we're well over 70% of where we okay. were. Well, but the okay. Chinese have, uh, have really diminished because of their issues and COVID and geopolitical issues. Um, we have about one third the amount of Chinese we've had before. But CS 2024 will be a different ball game, I think. I think people will come back. Oh, I, I think this is, the, the, this is great. I'm very happy with 2023. Uh, you know, we did go forward in 2022 and we're well, well ahead of where we were there because I was in the heart of the Omicron. Right. But a lot of companies, especially global companies at Cable, were very, very pleased that we went forward because this is so important for many yeah, companies to, to have their year's worth of business. They rely on this one event. Sure. Uh, so I think uh, I think that we also wanted to send a statement to the world that it's important that we learn how to live with this virus and we go forward with business. And it's, it's just something like the way we used to treat the flu and other diseases. We just have to, life goes on. We can't shut ourselves in our homes for three more years sure. and keep doing this. Before we close, caution. Uh, what are the key products or services that we'll see in Reliance Digital Stores, which you will take from CES? I'm a retailer. For me, every product is key as long as I bring it to the consumer, right? So I'm not going to choose brands or products. But I, I think uh, there's a childlike eagerness in us because we've seen some so many great products here. How fast can we bring them to India? How fast we are able to replicate? How you know, it's easy to replicate experiencing a part in a 5,000 square feet uh, stall to do it in a smaller area. Uh, I think that's where the key is. So we are excited. I think this is this uh, this this easily gels into how you see the Indian consumers thinking. So practically everything on the center is what I'm very very keen on bringing back to Indians. Great. On that note, gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Gary, can't wait for CES 2024 now because. I think 2023 uh, with these trade shows, this is very important uh, from from media point of view. From as you said, I think business on Zoom is impossible. We need to come meet, we need to network, and if it's Las Vegas, who's complaining? Well, this was an epic conversation in terms of tech. This can't get better than this. If you like this, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and do drop in the comments which technology trend you will be looking for in 2023. And what do you think will become? Very big in CS24. Until then, we take care.